A lot of you that are new to building in Roblox SCP-3008 might not know every single trick there is. Surprisingly, there's quite a few, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at everything you should always build in Roblox SCP-3008. Now before we hop into this, if you want to see more 3008 videos like this one pop up on your YouTube, click on that subscribe button down below. And now let's just get into it. Always, always, always build a door. It's such a simple thing, it's so funny that I need to mention this, but a lot of players just don't like to build doors in their bases. Some people are usually too lazy to build a door, but a lot of people don't know how to properly build the best type of door. I have ran by so many bases where the base is just a box with no door at all. Now don't get me wrong, technically there's still a door, you can move the wall and then just use it as a door, but usually that should be as like an emergency exit. Those types of doors aren't like proper doors, you usually want to have some extra protection. I'm not like trying to give you guys a door guide in this video, that's going to be a separate video video for another day, but if you really need a recommendation for the best type of doors to make, the current best is a double door with a ground slide and a slide in door. Basically the first part of the door, the exterior part, is just a table that's used as a ground slide door. You gotta carefully place the table so that you can properly like slide under it and then you go inside of a corridor, and in that corridor is gonna be a proper like sliding door where you slide your character to the side. It's basically something really simple that's gonna keep you alive. I I highly recommend you guys to always try it. Another thing you always want to build is food storage, and I'm not talking about just placing a refrigerator, there's actually a bit of a system that players have begun to have. So if you're new to the game, you have to understand that there's a hunger and a thirst bar that you have to fill up. And the thing about a lot of new players is that they think, oh I'll just fill up my inventory with all this food and eat it later. But a lot of the time new players don't know that their inventory is going to get cleared out really quickly after they try to fill up their hunger and thirst bars even once. So the food in your inventory isn't going to be enough because the players in 3008 have very large appetites. So this basically creates the situation where players need to store their food somewhere other than their inventory and then the players think hey maybe I should store my food in my base. And then a lot of people just end up storing their food on the floor, they find a few burgers, find a few pizzas, go back to the base and throw them on the floor. But this basically creates a problem not only for them but for everyone around them because that food can get laggy really quickly. For those who don't know, usually when you walk on food it flies around everywhere. And let's say somebody has just been dumping food all over their floor in the game. When they invite other players in, everybody's going to be walking on that food, that food is going to be flying everywhere causing chaos. So if you're storing food, remember to take at least a bathtub and just throw all of your food there. And if you don't want any further problems, take a wall TV and put it on top of the bathtub. Now if you're the type of player that's like, I don't like how bathtubs look in the middle of the base. Don't worry about it, all you gotta do is create a storage room in your base. Literally just take two walls, two pallets, or two couches, whatever you want to do, and just place them in like a corner of the base and place the bathtub inside of that. And boom, you got a storage room and you don't have to worry about that pesky food. By the way, if you got this far in the video, go comment build down below. And subscribe to the channel for more SCP-3008 videos like this one. A lot of solo players don't do this, but if you're playing with friends, watchtowers are lifesavers. A watchtower in 3008 is pretty much as the the name says it. It's a watchtower where you have some kind of build on top of your base that you can look out from above on. The watchtower basically gives you a 360 view of the IKEA while also making you the most beneficial member of your team. For example, if one of your friends goes out at night to scout and you need to be looking out for them, you can watch where the employees are from the top of your base. You can even tell your friends which plots are close, you could tell them where the nearest cafeteria is, maybe if you see another base, and with the watchtower and pressing Z for the zoom feature, you're pretty much an overseer of the IKEA. By the way, if you're playing alone without friends, you can still technically use a watchtower. Before you like run out to get materials, you can just scout up there on the watchtower to see if it's safe. So basically, by having a watchtower, not only do you have a really cool addition to your base, but you're also really, really prepared for anything around you. This next one might sound a little goofy. You might be wondering, why would I build a fence in an IKEA? Am I trying to like build a backyard? But having some kind of wall or even a fence in your base is actually really really useful because it's another way to protect yourself from everybody around. A lot of employees in 3008 aren't the smartest, their AI is pretty dumb. For example, when you're running away from an IKEA employee and you go inside of your base, half the time
time they just stop and go the other way because they forget about you. So by creating walls, you're making yourself extra defenses that will hopefully keep you safe. Also, as of update 2.71 and 3008, there's no way for employees to break through walls, but if you're watching this video in the future, maybe an update was added where they can break through furniture. So if employees ever become dangerous, you gotta be ahead of the game creating extra defenses. Speaking of defenses, that's actually another thing on the list that you should always build in your 3008 base. Now, a lot of defenses can vary in shape and size, there's tons of different ones, but a really simple one to start off building is by taking just random pieces of IKEA furniture and placing them all around your base. If you set up a perimeter, you're going to be a lot safer because not only are these defenses going to slow down employees, but they might slow down other players that want to grief your base or steal your food. In my opinion, a really good simple defense is having couches and ladders scattered around. Couches are pretty big in size, they're definitely going to slow somebody down because of how much space they take. And of course, ladders are a lot smaller, but the cool thing about them is that if an employee is chasing you and they get in front of a ladder, they might auto-climb that ladder and slow down. While the employee is quickly stuck on that ladder, you have more time to run before they jump boost into the air. So in a way, the employee might get a jump boost, but you basically get a time boost by how much longer you can run away from them. And if you're the type of person that really likes to decorate their base, I talk about this in a lot of my videos, but I highly recommend you to make street lamps. Basically, you use the aisle as a street, and you place the lamps on different corners of the plots. Not only is your base going to be really bright when you're walking around in the night, but if you get lost and you're really far away trying to search for it, you're going to see it a lot easier. Remember guys, when you're trying to focus on your base, build all of those tiny, minute details that are going to make it look a lot better in the long run. When you focus on creating an atmosphere for your base with all of those details, your base is going to look really good in the bigger picture. And remember guys, when you have a really clean base that you've built that has a lot of different additions, if a griefer comes it's going to be a lot harder for them to just take it apart. This is mainly because griefers really just want some quick enjoyment from destroying a base. So when you have a base with a large attention to detail, these griefers have a lot more work to do in terms of bringing your base down. And half the time, a lot of griefers are going to get really bored and straight up leave. Remember guys, don't ever feel bad about not having a base that's super simplistic because that just might save your builds. Also, please know that a lot of this stuff is just like recommendations and stuff. I'm not trying to tell anybody what to build and what not to build. As someone who's played a lot of 3008 and has been a big part of the community, I really just want to help out as many people as I can who are new to the game. And if you're new to my channel and want to see more 3008 videos like this, that playlist that just popped up on your screen has all my newest videos. But yeah, it's been Raid and I will see you all tomorrow.